Hey, welcome back to The Market Investor. I'm Daniel Snyder. Thank you so much for joining us for another video. I uh, just want to do a little recap of what's going on in the market right now. From what I've heard that these uh, videos are pretty useful because you guys don't have a lot of time to sit down and just run through the news like I do. Um, just taking this on every single day. Before we jump into that, I want to kind of do a little recap, right? So you, if you remember, if you look back at the old video on, I believe it was April 2nd, uh, I showed you the picture of Costco. I said, if you don't own this stock, why are you waiting? Costco is end of day today, uh, which end of week for this week, um, closed out the day at roughly $300 a share. Last April 2nd, it was only like two hundred ninety one fifty dollars or something like that. Uh, you would have already made about a $9 return. If you would have sold at yesterday, end of day yesterday, we had the close at approximately, it looks like it was like 306, 307. If you wanted to get into trading, Costco was a stock to do it. If you want to get into investing, Costco is a stock to do it. I cannot recommend it enough. It is a great company, great leadership, moves volumes over margin, and just is one of those companies that now more than ever with coronavirus and everything else going on, it's going to be one of the stocks that comes out on top right? You can think about Walmart, you can think about Target, your local your local grocery store, but Costco is a staple and it's even gone international and it has even started opening stores into the China market. So I'm just pulling up and I'm looking at SPY. If you look at where we closed today, it's around 278, um, which is 50% of the retractment from the lows. So it kind of makes sense that we're landing right there. Of course, this morning we saw a huge pump up when the Fed came out and announced that they were pumping over $2 trillion into the economy, which you just can't, you can't win, you can't lose. I don't know how, <laughs> whatever position side you were on, you either won or you lost. I mean, that's, and that's of course everything. But when the Fed comes out and does something like that, you see this huge push up of roughly, it was about 3% and it started before the market even opened. Um, but with the Fed pushing up money, printing, I mean, think about it. We got to worry about deflation for the long run of things. But as we recover and as we rebound, they'll start pulling that money back out of the economy. So there's no worries there. So people keep asking me, what are some stocks that I should be buying during the coronavirus? And, you know, I've told you many times, stay away from the cruise lines because the demand isn't going to pop right back there. But I mean, if it depends on how much money you have, right? Like you can't go out. I would recommend Amazon to everybody, but you can't go out and drop $2,000 if you're not ready to play with $2,000. Um, if you have $50, that's not going to work, right? So, but if you do have it, I would highly recommend Amazon for multiple reasons. One, everybody's staying at home. Packages are being delivered. Two, they have Amazon Web Services, which is pretty much helping support the entire back end of our entire internet and everything that we do now. It's either Amazon or Microsoft, which is Microsoft's another one. Uh, highly recommend Microsoft long-term buy and hold. Azure, the web service is competing with uh, Amazon Web Services and they're taking market share. And then on top of that, they're going back into building tablets and they just, and they just have a lot of diversity with their products within their company really great play on the opposite side of that i have to recommend apple i mean apple is a staple great cash balance sheet great products great leadership and they're going to help lead the charge through this coronavirus uh let's talk about netflix right netflix is one that you probably could have guessed as well everybody's watching tiger king right now everybody's watching um just their favorite shows and movies at home it is a staple service to your household pretty much at this point it's almost like people having internet or water or electricity people have netflix and they were the first to market mover and they've kept their competitive edge throughout this entire time over these last few years with the whole change in the entertainment industry. I can't recommend them enough right now. Um, airlines, best position airline. I would tell you to look at Delta. Delta has a great position, whereas they don't need to go out and buy new planes right away. They have great maintenance. They've got great employees. They've got a great cash balance sheet, even though they're burning through a lot of cash right now, trying to operate every single day. And hopefully this next week, we will finally get some news on what the federal government is going to give to the airlines to help get them through this time. Um, but airlines, I mean, look, people have to travel for work. As soon as we bounce back, people are going to be back on airplanes. People are going to want to travel and see their family or people are wanting to get what well, they want to get away. Right. You've been in your house for so long. You want to go on a vacation. How do you do that? You sure you can drive. But to say you want to go to Hawaii, that's an airline flight. Right. Keep that in mind when you're looking at that into the future. Um, this one's a little bit different for people. It's not something they really think about. But waste management, I think, is an incredible city utility that 
not a lot of people focus on, right? It's almost kind of like having water and electricity in your house. It's something that you pay for and you just don't really know it. And granted, I know that a lot of, not every city in the nation or around the world uses waste management, but they don't have a lot of competition either. And nowadays with their vehicles that are coming to pick up your trash, they're running them off of natural gas. They're not even using oil anymore. And the great thing behind that is that's less expensive. Right, so their expenses drop down because natural gas is a byproduct of drilling for oil, but it's not as costly as oil. It literally got to a point the other year where natural gas was in such oversupply that people were literally just burning it into the atmosphere because too much supply and not enough demand, of course, that's gonna shrink your price down to pretty much nothing and companies can't operate at that moment. But waste management, highly recommend you look into that. United Health. Uh, this one is only really because Bernie Sanders is out of the presidential race. Uh, he was a big advocate of attacking the private healthcare system in America. And now that he's pretty much saying, hey, I'm going to be on the ballot, but I am not going to continue my campaign. He is pretty much thrown in the towel and that's how everybody sees it. So at this point, you should start to look back at private healthcare companies. You can look at Teladoc as well, but I think Teladoc kind of shot up too much. So expect a pullback once this is over. People are still gonna go in, they're still gonna see their healthcare providers, but this was a good moment in history where it helped launch that company forward into the future and bring it into our lives. Same as Slack or Microsoft Teams, whatever you're using there. Uh, Disney, I can't recommend enough, even though it's going to take a little bit longer to rebound, but it's a solid company. It's a cheap price. They pay dividends that are great. They have great, um, control of entertainment. They're the number one family entertainment brand in the world. Their movie pipeline is still solid. They have Disney plus, they just announced they have 50 million subscribers and that's in America. So they have to launch India. They're going to launch South America. They're going to launch Europe. And as that happens, you're going to see a continuous uptick in subscribers each paying $5 or more a month. Really, really long-term revenue growth there. The last one I wanna to talk to you about is NVIDIA. Now, that's a company that most of you probably don't know about, but they make graphics cards, they make microchip processors. Um, it's kind of, I actually have a graphic card by NVIDIA in my computer right here. And the reason I wanna point this company out to you is one, they are trying to do a huge merger with another company in China right now. And if that goes through, expect a huge, shoot up in the price of their stock. And what most people don't know about them is that their graphics cards and their processors and everything else are not only being used in the cloud, but they're also being used as we push into artificial intelligence. And I think that's the future from what I've done with my studying. So that's why I'm a huge component of that company. I love their stock. It's pretty cheap right now, especially if they get that merger in China. Uh, so that's all I have now. I want everybody to remember tomorrow is good Friday. So the markets are closed, but I hope you enjoy your weekend and you know, we'll be here next week watching to see what the fed does, see what the government does. And hopefully we can get through the coronavirus soon. Uh, stay healthy everybody. And I hope you'll subscribe. I'll talk to you in the next one. Mm -hmm.